Hey guys, welcome to G Whiskey. I'm Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and every once in a while, throw in other whiskey-related content. Today, we're doing a challenge. Uh, I've been challenged to choose one whiskey that I can drink for the rest of my life. Really tough one. Kind of fun though. Stick around. Okay, so I've been invited to join a challenge for today's video by this absolute specimen of a man right here. Uh, he's got a great channel and I'll link it um, somewhere down below in the comments, I guess. His channel is called Jeff Whiskey, presumably because his name is Jeff and he likes whiskey, which ironically was a consideration for the name of this channel originally. But personally, I felt it was too on the nose. <laughs> I'm kidding, Jeff has a great channel and he actually spells his name properly. Anyway, the challenge is you can only have one whiskey for the rest of your life. So this would be the whiskey you'd take if you're planning on getting wrecked. And by wrecked, I mean plane wrecked, ship wrecked, you're stuck on an island. And on that island, you want to get wrecked. And this is your whiskey. But also it's not that because you have an endless supply. So this will be the whiskey that you drink continuously for the rest of your life. So you do have multiple bottles, but it's that bottle forever. So I guess you're on the island, but there's a supply chain of whiskey coming to the island, but they're on very small boats. Uh, they're only big enough boats to support the weight of a bottle. You can't use the boats. They're little tiny bottle boats. That makes sense. So this is a pickle. It's a conundrum. It's a quandary. Uh, as we all know, variety is a spicy life and we need different choices for our whiskey. And regardless of what we choose, if we're only allowed just one bottle, it can be incredibly expensive, rare, fancy, delicious. We are likely to tire of it. So yeah, really tough challenge. Now, the picks that I chose today are just where I'm at with my collection right now. If you ask me again next year, next month, in an hour, uh, it might be different. So really, I've got to choose a bottle that is Moorish, that has very high reachability. It needs to be a bottle that I can just tear into responsibly. Now, obviously, the point of this challenge is you choose one, but I did make it into a list where I've got four bottles that are runners up. And then at the end of the video, I'll have a big CGI battle where my final bottle emerges victorious. So, I mean, I guess we'll see what it is. Is it going to be something like this or this or this? Stay tuned. This is very exciting. Also, you guys know me. I've got to have my mystery pour in the glass here. This was a consideration for the challenge, but it didn't quite make the cut. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video and I'll share with you what that is. And I suppose we're ready. Let's jump into this challenge. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Okay, so my first instinct when I looked at this is like, man, I'm just going to choose a bunch of really expensive bottles since why wouldn't you? But I did want a couple budget options. And if we're doing budget options, I definitely thought about the Aaron 10. Uh, but the thing is, I would only want Aaron 10 on a certain condition. Uh, because here's the thing about Aaron 10. It's actually changed quite a lot over the years. And to be honest, I don't totally love the direction Aaron's been taking with the 10 year old. Uh, it's become increasingly sherried and cast dominated in recent years. Um, back in the day, back before the rebrand, when the bottle looked like this, uh, it was a very bright, fresh, clean, zesty, dissolute driven whiskey. And even those earlier releases after the rebrand did have more sherry influence, but nothing like the bottles we're getting today. So my condition, if I were to go with Aaron 10, would be I'd want to be able to mix it up. I would want access to all the Aaron 10s. That would mean Aaron 10 before the rebrand, just after the rebrand, contemporary bottles. That would add a lot of variety. And even though I can be critical of the more modern batches, they're still really good. At no point was Aaron 10 a bad whiskey. Yeah, it's predictable. It's popular. It's definitely not underloved. But it is a quality whiskey, it is an interesting whiskey, and it was a consideration, so there we go. Aaron 10. Next up, we're disregarding budget, and I'm choosing the Port Charlotte OLC01. Uh, I absolutely love Port Charlotte's Cask Exploration Series. I'm sure you guys all know that about me by now, unless you don't, but I do. And really, it doesn't matter what you pick from the series. I'm choosing the OLC because it's one of my favorites, but any one of them would work. However, there was one thing where I thought maybe not this one, and that's just because it's a it's a big whiskey. Uh, it might be a little bit too full on. We've got big peat in here. We've got a pretty forward cask influence. We've got a high ABV. 
And yeah, I was just thinking maybe it's going to be a little bit too peaty, a little bit too heavy for me to drink forever. Uh, and again, I'm sure I would manage. Uh, but, you know, I've been screaming about this line for a long time now. I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing about it. And again, very full on whiskey, so maybe not my number one pick, but it was definitely a consideration and it's a great whiskey. Port Charlotte, OLC, 01. Next up, we've got another very predictable choice and another bottle that you guys are tired of hearing about from me, and that's the Classic Laddie. Uh, I'm not on Brook Laddie's payroll, although you wouldn't know it from watching this channel. Good God do I push their stuff, but I do it because I genuinely love their whiskey and I really love this bottle. I think it's incredibly special, it's budget friendly, and it's unique. And I didn't just pick this one because I'm repetitive and I love droning on and on about this stuff, although that is true. Uh, this fits the list perfectly because it gives us variety. Just like the Aaron, Classic Laddie has changed and continues to change. You're never getting the same thing twice. I've had multiple bottles. They've all been different. They're all in keeping with like the same theme. You always get the Classic Laddie DNA, but they're all different. And the reason for that is on their website, it says the foundation for our Classic Laddie is not a recipe set in stone, but a distilling philosophy. We have no interest in precise uniformity. Instead, year by year, the variety and provenance of our barley shapes our spirit and an ever increasing range of casks are sourced to evolve the variety of flavors in our warehouse. Never striving for absolute consistency, each batch of the Classic Laddie will, by nature, be unique and subtly different. For example, the bottle I've got right now is from a few years back and it's got a much more pronounced wine cask influence. Usually when we think of Classic Laddie, we think it's very distillate driven with a lot of like ex-bourbon casks or refill ex-bourbon casks, but no, they actually do switch up the casks. There's often some wine influence and the bottle I've got now, quite whiny, very different from the last two or three bottles I've had. And of course, that's gonna be a big selling point for me because I've gotta drink it for the rest of my life on my little island and the fact that these are by nature not consistent and we are getting variety there. Obviously, that's going to be a good thing. We're much less likely to get completely bored having the same thing over and over again. So yeah, you guys know how much I love this stuff. It often beats out whiskeys that are double, maybe even triple the price when I do tastings with my friends. Um, also, by the way, they knocked out a new bottle design not too long ago, a few days back. And uh, I want to know what you guys think about this one. I'm kind of curious. Personally, I don't mind the look. I think it looks kind of cool, but it doesn't not look like a bike water bottle. Uh, but yeah, let me know your thoughts on the new design down below. Uh, regardless, great whiskey comes in at number something. Classic Laddie. Alright, so now that we've gotten the predictable bottles out of the way, I want to throw a bit of a curveball here. I'm going with the Glenlivet 18, the one at 43%, the older release. Now this one has weak specs. It's 43% colored, chill filtered. It's from a big commercial brand, so maybe not that sexy for enthusiasts. But have you tried this stuff? This whiskey was endlessly drinkable, at least it was for me. Uh, one of the best 18 year olds out there. And again, I wanna stress the old bottle design back when it was 43%. The new one uh, looks like this and it's 40%, which is very disappointing. Either way, this was complex. It was sherry, but not too sherry. It was subtle, it was nuanced. And beyond all that, it was cheap. So this whiskey kind of had it all, except for all the specs. However, in this case, it's kind of like the opposite of the Port Charlotte, which I was worried might be a little bit too big to drink forever. This whiskey coming in at 43% might be a little bit soft, uh, but I really love this stuff. And again, when you talk about reachability, uh, these bottles would not last me, man. I would peel through them responsibly. Personally, I stocked up on a few of these 18 year olds before they completely went out of circulation. They're getting pretty tough to find here in Taiwan. I'm not sure about your market if you can still find them. If you're in the States, it's probably still at 43%, although I don't know if the recipe is the same or if the quality's changed at all. Uh, if you're an American, maybe you can let me know down below in the comments. Regardless, great stuff, and it was another really solid consideration. Glenn Live at 18. Okay, so we've reached the top spot, and again, this is very tough, because who wants to drink one whiskey for the rest of their life? But if you're gonna push my hand, if, you know, gun to my head, I'm going with Jack Daniels Tennessee Apple. No, I'm not. I'm going with Arden American Cast Strength. Now this list, I mean, it's it's a crapshoot. Any one of these whiskeys and plenty more could have been considerations. I landed on this one, um, even though technically I would say I like the OLC more. Like if I were to score them, I might give it like a point above this one. Although to be fair, it is pretty close. Uh, but like I said, with that one, it might come off a little bit too full on, a little bit too heavy. 
Uh, and this one I think would strike a better balance. Of course, this one, like the OLC, is a cast strength release, but it's less cask forward. So we don't have these really dominating casks. Uh, also, we've got peat in here, but it's not peat dominated. The peat is quite restrained. We get plenty of distillate. Uh, it's got a beautiful oily texture. It's fruity, it's tropical, it's clean. Really good. And I gotta say, this 09 release, I am absolutely loving. I like it more than the 02 release, which I have reviewed in the past, and I absolutely love that one too. Um, this is one that I will be reviewing quite soon. Uh, and when I do, I expect you all to act very surprised when I say I fucking love it. We get texture, intensity, distillate, fruitiness, complexity. It's not cast dominated. It's not peat dominated. It's the whole package. And it's very much the style of whiskey that I'm enjoying right now. So that's my number one pick. At least it is for now in, you know, mid 2023. Ask me again next year. We'll come up with something else. But love this stuff. Hard to mark in cast strength. All right, so that was my choice. Uh, obviously, it's an impossible choice. It's impossible to choose one whiskey that you're gonna drink forever. So that's why I made it into a list. Obviously, you want variety and choosing one regardless, you know, you could have the best whiskey in the world. You're gonna get bored. And this is one, I mean, I always say, I wanna hear your thoughts and I do, but this one in particular, I wanna hear where you guys land on this one. You've got one whiskey for the rest of your life. That is a big choice. What whiskey are you going with? Let me know down below. Also, this is a challenge video, which means I've got to pass it on, and I'm going to pass it on to Sertug, also known as The Whiskey Enthusiast. He's got a great channel. It's a growing channel. I'll link it down below. Buddy, if you're up for it, I'd love to hear where you land on this one. And finally, for those of you who stuck around to find out what my mystery pour in the glass is here, I've got Highland Park 18. This one is the Travel Retail Edition. Uh, the regular 18 comes in at 43%. This one comes in at 46%, and it's better. Uh, Highland Park is known as kind of an all-rounder whiskey. We have some peat in there. We have some sherry in there. Nothing's too forward. We have a great maltiness, some florals. It's a wonderful whiskey. And yeah, I know this stuff is expensive. It might be hard to get. Uh, and I did try and include some accessible, budget-friendly options on this list, video, whatever. Uh, but realistically, guys, you've got one whiskey for the rest of your life. I think the vast majority of us, myself included, would not start sifting through our budget entry-level whiskeys. We'd be going through the fancier stuff, the rarer stuff, the more expensive stuff, the luxury picks. Tell me I'm wrong. Anyway, yeah, Highland Park 18, great whiskey. Uh, and I guess that's it for today's video, guys. Uh, once again, really looking forward to seeing what you guys pick, if you've got one whiskey for the rest of your life. So I'll definitely be looking through the comments for this one. Um, I've got Patreon and support the channel and thank you and like and subscribe and all that stuff. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye bye.